Hi, today's video is about home maintenance. I'm studying my backyard and I'm going to show you how to look after your bike, largely by cleaning it, checking components that are likely to wear out, doing a few minor adjustments and having a look at when to get it serviced properly by a professional and a couple of slightly more advanced things that you might feel comfortable doing for yourself at home. I've been told that the only thing worse than uh, jet washing your bike is not washing your bike. The reason for this is that there are quite a few bits of components that are sensitive, um, particularly anywhere that there's bearings, any um, suspension or electronic components, things like that that high pressure water can can get into and damage so really it's not a good idea to jet wash your bike but it's something that we see happening all the time trail sensors provide us with bike washers that are essentially a jet washer um, and you know it's something that happens so the first thing i'm going to show you is how to jet wash a bike safely so you can see here i've got a very dirty mountain bike that um, like the majority of bikes that I ride I haven't really bothered to keep clean um, and now I'm I'm gonna quickly jet wash it I've concentrated mainly on the frame avoiding spraying too much water around areas like the brakes the cassette or freewheel bottom bracket, headset, hubs, the wheel bearings. That's to prevent any unnecessary wet, but you can see it's a really good way of knocking. Turning it round and fitting it securely into the work stand. So there we go, avoiding any sensitive parts, largely using the jet washer just to knock dirt off the frame, off the tyres. So that's saved me a bit, uh, quite a lot of time. The frame itself isn't 100% clean, so I'm gonna need a, a cloth for that. We'll cover tools properly at, towards the end of this video. I'm just gonna talk briefly about what to use to clean your bike. So there's a massive range of specific bike cleaning products out there um, that are really, really good. Far better than soap and water. But today I'm gonna use soap and water because it's something that's available to pretty much everybody. So I've got a bucket of hot soapy water. I've got some rags cut up from an old t-shirt. I've got a spray gun. That's actually the spray gun from one of those really good bike cleaning products, which helps the cleaner to foam up. Selection of brushes. This is a cassette and chain brush. Really good. If you don't have access to one of those, you could also use something like a washing up brush or a toothbrush. Again, that's a general bike cleaning brush. You can see quite well used. Um, great for getting into tight spaces. Now, and this, this part of this bike cleaning routine is that whilst we clean everything, we check it. So it's a bit more of an advanced M check. So for that reason, I'm going to start at my front wheel. On the roadside repairs video we looked at, um, multi-tools like this one and you can use this multi-tool to do virtually everything I'm going to show you today but it's a lot easier to do it with proper allen keys today I'm going to use this type putting the ball end in allowing me to spin it taking that bolt through axle out and lifting the wheel out I'm going to have a look at the wheel itself the first thing I'm going to look at here 
is the disc so I can see there's some discoloration on there there's somewhere I can feel it now they're performing okay but I can see that that's something I need to be aware of so that might be a bike shop job to go and get some new rotors holding on to the sides of the hub and spinning the wheel round I can look and see that that is running straight and true and if there was any problem with the bearings in this wheel I'd be able to feel a roughness in my hand again that's a job that I would take to the bike shop some people might feel comfortable swapping bearings at home so that's my wheel so the next thing I'm going to do is clean it up not putting any soap on the actual brake disc okay now let's give that a quick rinse down so that's the front wheel the next thing to check is the forks and the brakes so I'll just give these a quick wipe with the cloth just to bring back that just to bring back that shine and again having a wipe around the brakes I'm going to put this cloth aside that one's just for the brakes and it stops me from contaminating them so I'm going to put that in between Just give those pads a clean and put this up there. Using a small Allen key, just take the um, securing bolt out. The reason I'm doing this is that the best way to check your brake pads when you're using disc brakes is to take them out and physically look at them and they'll come out. I can see here that they're quite even, they're worn, but there's plenty of wear on them. And there's even, if I hold them together, some of the chamfer left at the edge of that braking material. So they're absolutely fine. So they can go back in, sometimes a little bit fiddy, fiddly. Some load the pads from the bottom and some load the pads from the top. So you, if, you, if you want to do this yourself, you only have to look um, at which um, type of brakes you have. For some people, this is gonna be one of those, I'm gonna take that to the bike shop to get a professional mechanic to do it sort of jobs. So now I've got clean forks, clean brake, I've checked my pads, I've checked the disc, I've checked the wheel. That a nice squeeze, that's pumped up properly. And just screwing that back in. Can you notice I'm starting to inspect a bit higher up? Taking my cloth, I'm just going to give the handlebars and the grips a wipe and check the feel of the brake levers. They feel nice and even. Moving the handlebars from side to side tells me if there's any issues in the bearings here. Just working across that frame having a look for any damage to that brake hose. By doing this, I'd notice any chips, dents and cracks in the frame as well. We're now going to remove the back wheel to have a look at the brakes, the hub, free wheel in this case. <coughs> and I'll show you later when we look at my road bike, um, what we do if your bike's got gears and a cassette. So this is slightly more um, complicated than 
taking the front wheel out because we've got to think about the chain. So again, this is a bolt through axle. So I've just got an Allen bolt at each side to undo. Just need to loosen the chain so that that'll come off. Because this is single speed, I'm going to do that using the tensioning bolt here. So leaving the chain dangling there, we're just gonna get back to this free wheel. Cassette cleaning brush. Get in behind, it's what the long bristles are really good for. So having a look, we can inspect that um, disc again. And we can see there's some discoloration and wear here. It's actually better than the one on the front but still something I need to uh, be aware of. Put, put on the list. And using a clean cloth with nothing but a bit of water on it to wipe any dirt off. I'm gonna put that here because I'm gonna use the same cloth for the disc caliper. I'm just gonna use my general brush to clean up the uh, wheel nicely. Knocking off any bits that I missed with the jet washer. What I'm doing not very elegantly here is getting the cloth soaked in soapy water around the hub so that I can floss it. So taking this that I've only used on the disc from the same brake, I'm going to clean on the inside. I can't see as well as if I took them out. But if you don't feel confident taking the pads out, you can just look down as you clean them. Small brush. And then it's time for me to put that wheel back in. Lining it up, making sure that the chain is somewhere on the cassette. And we have one clean, properly functioning mountain bike. So here I've got my road bike. I'm gonna go through this in pretty much the same way, but point out a few small differences. Rim and caliper brakes. And this has a cassette and a derailleur. So we're going to look at those differences and I'm not going to jet wash this one because it's got matte paintwork and it, it's a lot prettier. The first thing I'm going to do is take the rear wheel out. <coughs> and if you can remember from the roadside repairs video, the way to take the, the rear wheel out easily is to bring the chain to the smallest sprocket on the cassette. So inspecting this wheel, there are no discs because it's not a disc brake. So what I need to do is feel this rim to see if it's worn. I can feel somewhere, so I'm going to have a look for wear indicators. This wheel doesn't actually have a wear indicator, but what you're looking for is, is maybe a, a line, a painted line in the middle of the rim, or a pair of partway drilled holes that just show you that when it's worn to that level, it's um, worn out. You might also find the same thing on tires. On my tires, I'm going to look for any cracking on the rims, but I can see that they're actually all right. That free hub feels fine. And
the wheels running true. So I'm just going to clean it up. Long bristles to get in between. Road dirt can actually be harder than all of the mud and grit from mountain biking to clean off because there's all the petrochemicals and bits of tar and stuff that stick to your bike. So that wheel's fine. Whilst I'm cleaning the brake pads, I'm also having a look to see if there's any wear. I can see that there's some. I can also see that it's even. So these pads are um, aligned well with the rim. Cleaning the mech, I'm noticing I've got a frayed cable end. So I'm going to change this gear cable. So washing up liquid bottle full of water, I'm just using to rinse off. Quick clean up of those chain rings. And then holding my cassette brush to the outside of the chain, I'll just run it through a few times. Also a good opportunity to just check that those gears are shifting well. So those are absolutely perfect. With no disc brake, I can actually manage to do the front wheel and forks without taking them out. I do have to make a special effort to check the brake pads if I don't take the wheel out and the rims. So now I've got a nice clean bike to work on. When you do go to the bike shop, get your bike serviced, top tip the mechanics always appreciate a clean one to work on um, so we've checked most things so we're just going to look at some of the finer detail here um, something we didn't cover on the mountain bike that I'll come back and do later is lubricating the chain chain needs to be lubricated that is not a chain lubricant that is a lubricating spray, really good around suspension components, and things like that. It mainly just disperses water to help keep things clean. That is a chain lubricant. It comes usually in wet or dry, which refers to the weather. I like the ones that say ceramic on them um, because they leave a residue and you don't need to apply them as often and I'm a bit lazy with my maintenance. So, I'm going to drip some of that lubricant onto my chain as I turn it round. There's more than enough on there, if anything too much. Then going to change through those gears making sure that that lubricant spreads a little bit on each sprocket and then to the big chain ring as well. The next thing to check is the tightness of the bolts or the torque. Most of the bolts on this bike are either a four or a five mil um, Allen key. I'm going to use these ones, if you can see, the bigger ones are longer. 
So apply more torque. So this is just checking if anything's loose and tightening them up. Nope, they're fine. They're fine. If you notice I'm not forcing anything, these are quite loose. Um, in in the bike shop they might use a torque wrench very expensive piece of kit but very very precise the final thing to check and particularly important with a road bike is the tire pressure on the mountain bike i just gave it a squeeze I went, yeah that's okay and that would be fine when i'm doing my m check but once in a while i want to get a bit precise I pump these up to 110 pounds per square inch. My pump has a pressure gauge on it. This is a track pump, which is designed for using at home, not for taking with you, but it's much easier to use. So I'm going to unscrew this valve. The last one I did was the e-bike, which uses Schrader valves, like the car valves. So fitting that on there, I can see that this is actually at 60 PSI. So now we're gonna look at the, the slightly more technical bit. We're going to put a new gear cable in because that one's frayed at the end. And I'm going to show you how to use the barrel adjusters to sort out the cable tension. My mountain bike has hydraulic disc brakes, so they need the hydraulic fluid bleeding, which is a much more technical job. I'll make a separate video on that at a later date, if lots of you put comments in the bottom of this video saying that you want it but for now I'll just stick to what to do with the cable stuff so you'll notice on your brakes there might be a little barrel adjuster at the top or it might be next to the lever what this does is it simply tightens up the tension of that cable. I've wound this one right up and it stuck the brake completely on. So I'll just wind it back down until the wheel's running freely. And get that set how I want it. And the same at the back. Wound back in again until it's perfect. So the cable for the rear gear, rear derailleur, runs underneath the frame and up to the right hand gear shifter. I'm going to cut it here, just the inner of the cable using a pair of cable cutters. And right underneath the hood at this side, you can see The end of that cable coming out. We need to be really careful to use the same type of cable. Brake cables and gear cables are different. Sometimes you'll get a different brand that has a different type of cable like this one because these are Campagnolo. They're slightly smaller than a Shimano one. 
this is possibly one of those things where people are, are gonna want to take it to the shop. But I'm just showing you because it is one of the more advanced things that you can do at home is changing a cable. Having done it at the side of the road, really wouldn't recommend that. So I'm just gently pulling that cable out and getting rid of it. So having unraveled that and got to just the fine end, they make it easier for you by putting a little dab of solder on it. Because these outer cables here have been cut with a good quality tool by someone who knows what they're doing, not me, um, it's actually really easy to feed that cable through. I'll also make a point of feeding that through properly underneath the frame. And that brings my cable back up to the derailleur. On the derailleur, there's a bolt here, which is used to secure the end of the cable at the right side. So I'm gonna loosen that off. Loosen it, not take it out. And then I can get rid of that bit of old cable and feed the last bit of the new through. That took a little bit of effort and it felt quite dry. So I'm gonna take a bit of that general lubricating spray. And put it over the end of that cable. Just to give it a little bit of an extra bit of extra help. That's feeling much better. Pulling that nice and tight with my hand. I'll then tighten that nut up, bolt up even. Now, I'm going to change up through the gears. These will probably need re-indexing, which means resetting the cable tension. We do that with this. Right, so with it in the easiest gear, the biggest sprocket, and change to the second position, I'm going to adjust the tension until it drops. That clicking is telling me it's not happy. So that just needs backing off again. I don't want to leave this cable dangling around where it could get caught up. So I'm just gonna cut it down nice and neatly. And 
and put a cable end over the top. To secure it, I'd nip it with a pair of pliers. So that's on nice and tightly and that won't look messy and, and be sharp and frayed like the old one was. So there we have it. Two well maintained bikes. Here I've got my electric bike. There are some slight differences with maintenance for this. Because for one, it's too heavy to put on a stand like this. Um, bike shops that deal with a lot of electric bikes have heavier duty, stronger stands that are mounted to the wall so that they can work on them. Um, the weights in the battery and the motor, which are all very expensive and very technical, so they're not things that I'm going to mess with myself at all. This and wheels, it's kind of my limit personally and where, yeah, it needs that professional mechanic. So talking of wheels, I'll show you a quick check that we do. Now this is something that I'd check and then not mess with because it's above my pay grade. Just checking the spoke tension. So all I'm doing is I'm squeezing the spokes together just very gently and making sure that they're all an even sort of tightness. If they're not, then the wheel needs truing. The other wearable part that needs checking regularly for wear is your chain. Chain stretch with use. And because on an electric bike, I've got my not insignificant power plus the power coming from the electric motor, that chain that's the same as any other bicycle chain takes a lot of um, a lot of stick has a lot of torque going through it this one's 10 speed so i change the chain when it gets to three quarters of a percent stretched now you can't check that by racket thigh so i've got a little measuring tool on this side that says 0.75, I'm going to put the hook in and see if it fits in, and that won't fit in. If that chain, if that tool had dropped in, then it would have told me that that chain needed replacing. The bike shop will have. A much more precise version of this tool they'll be able to tell you exactly how much stretch your chains had at home we don't need to know this we just need to know does it need replacing or not which is why that types absolutely fine um, so obviously with the e-bike taking a lot more wear it's heavier it's got more power you wear through your chains quicker you also wear through tires quicker which doesn't really matter on this one because it's got really heavy duty tires um, and brake pads so it's also I'd check my brake pads more frequently than I would on a conventional bike so you'll have noticed through this video that I've used my work stand a lot this is a home work stand it wasn't particularly expensive and it's not the most stable thing on the market. This is nowhere near the specification of what they'd have in the shop, but it's really good for light maintenance like the things that we've been doing because it keeps your bike still and out of the way. It's a really good thing to get, but if you don't have one, there are alternatives like hooking your saddle over the corner of your wheelie bin to support your bike whilst you've got the wheels out. Improvise, use what's available to you. 
pretty much everything that we've looked at today can be done using this multi-tool but it's a lot easier to use proper tools some of the tools that are useful are actually straightforward household tools that you'd probably have in a normal toolbox anyway like screwdrivers pliers an adjustable spanner a good quality set of allen keys like these is a really worthwhile investment if you're going to do some home maintenance i picked these up in a supermarket special offer there's a full set of um, allen keys in a t-wrench with a nice comfy handle and they've also got these torx wrenches and we're starting to see more torx wrenches on uh, uh, keys on, on modern bikes so they're a useful thing to have this is a hand pump that i might take with me in case of an emergency by the side of the road this is a track pump that's actually quite an expensive one um, but you can pick them up fairly cheaply it's got a pressure valve on that means that you can be precise like we did with the road bike it's also a lot more comfortable and easy to use a few other specific bits and bats that you might want to use, get get for yourself a pedal spanner it's just like a normal spanner but thinner so it slides in between the crank and the pedal to make it a lot easier to put, put them on take them off and again a nice long handle so that you can knit them up nice and tightly we talked about chain checkers that can save you a lot of money in the long run because a worn out chain wears out chain rings and wears out the cassette as well obviously giving you three lots of things to replace rather than just one speaking of changing cassettes if you want to do that at home you're going to have to get special tools this is a chain whip which holds the cassette in place and this is a specific um, cassette spanner lubricants and cleaning products PTFE spray lube absolutely brilliant for lubricating your cables for spraying around areas that are susceptible to rust because it disperses water great around the stanchions of suspension forks and things like that really worthwhile thing to have but it does not replace chain lube this is a specific chain lube I favour the ceramic types because they leave a waxy residue and don't need to be topped up as often and I'm lazy with my maintenance normally your choice is between wet and dry lube dry lubes for dry weather wet lubes for wet weather I have absolutely no idea why bike shops in Lancashire bother to sell dry lube it's wet all the time so I'll get the wet lube there is a whole host of bike cleaning products out there there's no bad ones they're all really really good proper bike cleaning um, sprays do a much better job at cleaning your bike than washing up liquid and water will do but washing up liquid and water does work you just need to put a bit more elbow grease in the spray bottle that your cleaning products come in is what does the majority of the work for you so a spray bottle full of washing up liquid and water really really good idea <coughs> bucket of hot soapy water and some rags and that's pretty much all you need so 
today we've looked at cleaning your bike doing more ferry checks and some home maintenance we've learnt why it's not a great idea to rely on the jet wash all the time and also how to avoid doing any damage to your bike if you do choose to use one we've looked at what sorts of tools and equipment you'll need and we've looked at how to do things like check and change brake pads change a cable and adjust cable tension some of these things might feel a little bit too complicated for you it's absolutely fine to take them to the bike shop at the end of the day my bicycle is my vehicle so I want it to be roadworthy and safe all the time so the question is how much do you trust your maintenance answer that and you know how often you need to get it serviced and how much to do for yourself at home.